What you see here are called servers. This is a data center. You have racks and racks of about uh, hundreds of servers. These are computers used by big companies like Google, Yahoo, and all of the major banks. Now they need all of these to run their business and to crunch a lot of data. And you see all of those wires there. There's lots of data flowing through there uh, using, uh, you have storage there, fiber channel, and ethernet. Now the problem is you have a Frankenstein, a mixed soup of uh, all of that data going in and out. Now how do you unify that? How do you consolidate that? Well, we're here at Cisco. Cisco is one of the biggest networking company in the world and uh, they practically drive all of the networking standards right now. And we're going to talk to one of the bright boys of Cisco. We're here at their regional headquarters uh, in Singapore on Shenton Way. It's the central business district of uh, Singapore. And we're going to talk to Rajiv Ramaswamy. He's uh, the general manager, vice president of the data center business unit of Cisco. So let's go there and talk to him. Okay. This way. Follow me. Could you briefly describe to us uh, uh, Cisco's unified uh, fabric strategy? A while ago, we were talking about uh, converging the disparate IOs from the uh, uh, fiber channel in the storage and the Ethernet on the on the LAN. Uh, how how would you describe briefly the, the unified fabric uh, strategy of Cisco? So what we see is convergence happening in the data center, right? I mean. Our customers are trying to consolidate and virtualize the data center mm -hmm. to save costs, gain efficiency, and get more responsive, mm -hmm. be more responsive to their customers' needs. So part of this consolidation is the consolidation of the network. Mm -hmm. but rather than have three separate networks or four separate networks, as the case may be, do it all in one network. That's going to save you cost. Mm -hmm. That's going to save you power. Right? And, that's the, and it's going to make provide universal access Everybody can hang, all servers can access all network resources. Mm -hmm. So the combination of those things is what's driving the notion of a unified fabric. And I don't believe we are going to be alone. This is driven. This is not just Cisco's strategy. This mm -hmm. is, I believe, something that the industry is going to adopt because it makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, it makes sense. Our customers think it makes sense. And uh, so I think this is going to happen. Now, there's a lot of work underway in the standards bodies, for example, to develop fiber channel or Ethernet specifications. So you know, so that fiber channels can be converged over Ethernet, mm -hmm. and we believe that's going to happen, and because there is significant capital operational uh, uh, savings and benefits associated with it. Mm -hmm. You also mentioned something about uh, power through uh, the regular uh, network. Uh, a few years ago, there was uh, this experiment. I, I think it was an, it was actually productized by some companies, uh, but it's the other way around. It's uh, IP over the power lines. So do you think it will ever happen as far as the data center is concerned that uh, everything from the power to, to, the, to the data, everything from, from one ch through one uh, cable or, or fiber? Okay, so this is slightly different from what we talked about. So, uh, uh, you know, I think, you know, yes, there have been lots of attempts at trying to do both ways, right? Which mm -hmm. is, you know, try to deliver communications over power lines mm -hmm. as well as power over communication lines, right? Yes. I mean, we've done the opposite. We've done power over Ethernet. Yeah. Right, and we and people are trying to deliver, you know, as you said, you know, trying to deliver networking over power lines. Okay. Right now, in the data center, first of all, I don't see much of an adoption for power over Ethernet. Right, I mean, because power is kind of, you know, the challenge is that you don't have an efficient mechanism for combining both together. Right, you need high bandwidth, mm -hmm. and you need lots of power. Okay. Okay, trying to put those two things together. Uh, you know, it, it's difficult, okay? okay? So, at least for me, and for my foreseeable future, I mean, clearly there's going to be research uh, underway, but I see power in the data center as being separate from network connectivity. Okay, yeah. okay. One final question. Uh, how, how would you uh, briefly describe Cisco's attempts at re-architecturing the data center? I would say that we are in the early stages of, uh, of re-architecting the data center. I mean, clearly, you know, when we got started in the data center, we were selling what we knew, knew how to sell, right? We started out selling Ethernet switches in the data center. We were selling Ethernet switches. Then, uh, back in 2000, we realized that, you know, there's this whole other part where we could sell switches, storage. Mm -hmm. And, okay, therefore we went off and built storage switches. I mean, you know, our perspective was, if something needs to be connected, we'll provide the means to connect it. Mm -hmm. So we started out with Ethernet switches, and then we ended up building storage switches and SAN switches, and we got to a healthy market share. Today we have about half, 50% uh, of the SAN director class market uh, 
in, in, in storage. So we were successful in, in getting both of these uh, markets and uh, we have about a 75% uh, share in the Ethernet market. Mm -hmm. Now, as we went through this process, we realized more and more that the data center was compartmentalized. We had Ethernet, we had storage, and we ourselves were compartmentalized. We had separate business units doing Ethernet switches and separate business units doing storage switches. Our customers were compartmentalized. They had separate people buying storage products and they had separate people buying switching products, separate people buying computer products. So, and, and, and you know, and we realized that at that point, you know, wouldn't it make sense to combine all these things? We've been doing these two. Why wouldn't we combine them? Mm -hmm. Look at the benefits. Mm -hmm. and, and so we're in the early stages of that, right? I think there's now widespread industry drive. The time is now. Why? Because, first of all, there is an explosion in bandwidth. There is a need to build larger and larger data centers. That's happening. Right? Time is now. It's happening now. Right? With the explosion of the web, web 2.0, you know, more and more traffic, more and more video over the internet, uh, more and more content created by users. So people are going to need to build data centers. That's happening. The second is, if you look at the IT departments of large companies, they're trying to consolidate their data centers. We know customers who have 100 data centers that's completely out of control. They're trying to bring them down to about 10 data centers so that they can get more control over it, get capital and operational cost savings. Same thing is happening in virtualization. Right? Everybody realizes that they have to virtualize and the reason for virtualization is first is to increase their utilization of assets and to defer capital expenses and then over time get better responsiveness. So this trend, the need for more bandwidth coupled with the need to control costs and virtualize or consolidate and virtualize network, mm -hmm. I think is making it right for us to introduce a converged product at this time. Mm -hmm. So I think so I think we are you know, the time you could say if we introduced this product five years ago, probably, you know, people would not have really, it would not really have taken off because the data center evolution was still in its early phases. Mm -hmm. uh, today, I think right now, it, it, it's the right time to be able to introduce a product like this because we are getting a lot of mind share when we talk to our customers. They all want to do this. Okay, thank you very much.